Making headlines tonight. A UNICEF study says three out of every four children in the Eastern Caribbean experience discrimination of some sort in the school system. A young man gunned down in Yard Gap, Bush Hall, St. Michael. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital restarts its joint replacement program. And coming up in sports, international drivers set to compete in tomorrow's Ultra Fest. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. I'm Shane Jones, leading the news. As World Children's Day was celebrated today, officials from UNICEF are reporting high discrimination levels against youngsters. Wendy Burke attended a special rally and inclusion mural unveiling at the Botanical Gardens to mark the occasion. The message of inclusion echoed throughout the celebrations to mark World Children's Day. However, there are many youngsters who are being discriminated against. According to the Deputy UNICEF representative, Tanya radosav Jevek, a recent poll showed that three out of four children and adolescents face it. In the lead up to World Children's Day, UNICEF Eastern Caribbean, we wanted to elevate and hear children's voices. So we joined countries in running a poll on discrimination and also inclusion on our U Report platform. And the results are really disturbing, they're astounding. A significant three out of four of you, so one, two, three, one, two, three, three out of four of you have said, and of, of young children and, and, um, and adolescents that participated in this poll in the Eastern Caribbean, you said that you have experienced discrimination in the recent past. And then more than half of you said that this discrimination took place in school or your communities. Prime Minister Motley, before unveiling the inclusion mural done by the Charles Brothers and school children, said they need to cooperate with each other and remember key lessons for life. When you set yourself a goal, sometimes things happen that will cause you to have to fall off or cause you to slow down or cause you even to stop. But don't ever lose sight of your goal because once you keep that goal in mind, with faith, with commitment, with discipline, with belief in yourself, you can make it. And I ask you to remember that message if you remember nothing else. Minister with Responsibility for Children, Kirk Humphrey, reminded the young ones that this world is theirs. This is your world. You don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It was your world yesterday when many of our forefathers came here against our will. And the ones who stayed, you are the descendants of the strongest, bravest people to ever live. You therefore are the strongest, bravest children to ever live. It is also your world today. Do not let anybody also tell you any different. And I say so because I know that children now are facing all kinds of things, but this is still your world. And I believe that most of our parents have still put in us the values that will help us get through. With the mural at the Botanical Gardens, Environment and National Beautification Minister Adrian Ford told the school children gathered that they are filled with greatness. Almost everything great in this world has been produced by young children. Almost everything great. And what I see before me with this mural is a great production by our young people. Give yourself a round of applause. Following the unveiling of the mural, a number of officials placed a ceremonial stroke to mark the day, after which the children displayed their many talents. Wendy Burke, CBC News. Thanks, Wendy. A section of the Bush Hall St. Michael community is currently on lockdown following the latest fatal shooting. Shane Seeley has the details. Police are busy at this hour, trying to determine what led to yet another brazen daylight shooting, this time in Bush Hall Yard Gap this afternoon. It was just after two when shots rang out. When the smoke settled, residents called police operations to report that a man was shot and was lying in the street motionless. Sometime around quarter past two, our operations control room received a call. Um, the caller explained that there was a shooting in the area of Bush Hall and as a result one man is lying motionless and appears to be dead. 
uh, police from District A police station along with CID personnel immediately responded. I'm told they got here within 10 minutes of the report. And on arrival, they came across the body, motionless body of a young male. He has not been formally identified as yet, as you can appreciate. We are still early in our investigations. The area has been cordoned off as officers continue their investigations. Only residents of this densely populated St. Michael community were allowed through the caution tape and given the necessary instructions not to disturb the scene, but allowing them to make their commute home. Lawmen are now appealing for anyone who may have witnessed the incident to contact the police at emergency number 211, Crime Stoppers at 1-800-8477, or you can call the nearest police station. Shane Seeley, CBC News. Thanks, Shane. Well, we, uh, since uh, learned that police have identified the victim, uh, dead is Palo Rohan Arthur, 21 years old of Greenwich Road, Hinesbury Road, St. Michael. We'll bring you more details as they become available. The Barbados Police Service is embracing different strategies in its anti-crime fight. Its band has kicked off a series of concerts targeting troubled communities to bring entertainment and also build links in those areas. The first stop was the Ivy housing area in St. Michael. As we hear in this report from our Rianne Phillips, all stakeholders welcomed and supported the initiative. The Ivy Housing area came alive for the midweek concert headlined by the Barbados Police Service Band and a lineup of local artists. Unlike recent times, instead of being paralyzed by the fear of gun violence, residents of all ages were all smells. As we hear from Director of Music of the Barbados Police Service Band, Andrew Lynch, the concert series is offering more than just entertainment. Our job is to bring that comfort, that level of comfort, to show that we care. Uh, so we are going to be providing musical um, performances along with members from the community itself and other artists to bring joy and comfort to the, to the folks in the community. The move has also been welcomed by many, including Parliamentary Representative Trevor Prescott and residents. The selection of the music was extremely good. And you can see that the, the audience was very much an integral part of all that has happened here tonight. Um, I think the, the police establishing this partnership with the community um, has set an important precedent, has forced me into a position now where I may have to come back and give this community more entertainment before we close 2022. But I, I, as long as money can be found, um, but I promise them that for the Christmas season, I will make sure that something else come along. I can say that from the presence, the, the first day the presence of the police with the mobile bus, I have felt a difference in being safe in my community. I want to thank the Barbados Police Band for excellent service and music and renditioning and everything that they gave us tonight and I loved it. It was it was nice. It was a very positive initiative that was taken by the Bar Barbados Police Service in terms of fostering community spirit and harmonious um, form a harmonious relationship between the people and the community and also the police service. In terms of you know, the, 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 the climate is so nice right you now you understand the weather is a bit heavy over here but it's good to see that people can come out tonight and enjoy a wonderful evening of culture. And the artists who perform on the night brought a special message for the Ivy and other communities. You know, it's mostly Almighty, aka the Mobby Man, and I out here in the Ivy, you don't know, we're just here pulling with the Royal Police Service Band. We outside for sure, making things better in the communities. Is the balance now. Let me call and have a good time, man. Show the walks the artists straight out to the 246. And it's all about ending the gun violence right here tonight in the Ivy St. Michael. Here we have the Barbados Police Service Band playing and they're hosting this event, you know, because of all the gun violence that's going on in the communities. First spot that we touch is the Ivy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, end the gun violence. We're sure that there are many other ways out here to enjoy your life, embrace, and have unity, yeah? It's really good to see the, um, the police band coming out in the community and doing these sort of things, concerts shows, you know, getting that community spirit going because, face it, policemen are community service workers as far as I'm concerned. So you need this sort of thing happening. And what this does is bring the, the community 
um, a little closer together as far as um, respecting the police service. And that is not necessary. The concert series is expected to continue in 2023. Rianne Phillips, CBC News. Coming up, the QEH restarts its joint replacement program. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital has officially restarted its joint replacement program. It's come approximately 10 years after the program was curtailed due to financial constraints. According to a statement from the hospital, it came into effect from yesterday. It noted that three patients are scheduled to receive knee replacement surgeries within the first week of the program's re recommencement. QEH Executive Chairman Juliette Bino Sutherland stated that similar programs in Trinidad and Ghana were carefully examined and teething problems identified and corrected. In commending the hospital's management team and orthopedic staff, Minister in the Ministry of Health and Wellness with responsibility for the QEH, Dr. Sonia Brown, assured the public that additional resources have been put in place to address the backlog of cases. She also indicated that phase two of the program would involve the resumption of hip replacement surgery as well, which is scheduled to begin later this month. In related news, the QEH has one of the highest survival rates in the region when it comes to premature babies, according to a senior official at the healthcare institution. A premature baby is one who has delivered under 37 weeks gestation and yesterday was observed as World Prematurity Day. Newborn intensive care specialist and head of the neonatal intensive care unit at the QEH, Dr. Gillian Birchwood, says these babies are high risk. It's really important to recognize because these are the babies who are at highest risk of death during their first month of life. So the majority of children who don't make it to the age of five, which is a milestone in global health, are little ones who don't make it during that first month of life. So it is absolutely crucial that first month of life. Here on the newborn intensive care unit at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, we have one of the best survival rates in the entire Caribbean. And I think that is something that is worth celebrating for all the hard work of the staff. So we have one of the lowest mortality rates in the Caribbean. Days on after a fire at a commercial property located in Brighton, St. Michael, just off the mighty Griner Highway, fire officials are were up to this morning uh, still battling hot spots in the complex. Divisional officer with the Barbados Fire Service, Marlon Small, tells CBC News fire officials are maintaining a continuous presence on the scene as the building is still smoldering. Retired teacher, songwriter, calypsonian and lover of sports and culture, Anthony Warren has been laid to rest. His last rites were performed at the St. Mark's Anglican Church recently, as Ariane Phillips tells us. The hundreds that packed the St. Mark's Anglican Church and gathered on the compound reflected the countless lives that Anthony Walwyn touched during his lifetime, and much of that was embodied in the tributes during the funeral service. We heard about his contribution to entertainment, culture, social activism, and other fields. The work that Tony Walwyn has produced um, really speaks to the very best of Barbadian endeavors. I dare say that, and I've said this on a number of occasions, his impact on Barbarian Calypso will never be measured or can never be quantified properly. But I dare say that his introduction um, into that, that Calypso genre really made everyone around us improve. And the reform became a member of the Men's Educational Support Association, NISA, in 2001. The association being formed in May 2000. As he was a dedicated and very supported member, he was instrumental in encouraging many men who reside in the parts of St. John to join the association. But none were more touching than those from his sons. Dad, you are a patriarch. You are my Goliath, my lion. Thank you for the legacy you gave us. Shramati and I are grateful to have received your blessing on our union before your untimely passing. I love you always. When my dad tells jokes, write a song or a prose, all you could really do is say, Shh, Tony is too much. When my dad argues, if you ever had an argument with him, 
you'll be thinking in your head, 20 is too much. When my dad parties, my dad parties too much. But most of all, when my dad gives, my dad gives too much. My father was a kind and caring person. An example of this was shown during the last year when my mother was going through the latter stages of dementia and she was unable to feed herself. My father would come over to her house almost every day just to help to feed her. Your work here on earth has ended. In the relativity of time, I will see you again someday soon, but not too soon. <laughs> You have made me into the strong principal man that I am today. That there is a void in my heart that can never be filled. I will never see your face, your smile, feel your touch, or hear your voice. But the fond memories of you will always be in my heart. Rest easy now, Dad, and know that you were loved and loved dearly. Warren died at the age of 82. May he rest in peace. Rianne Phillips, CBC News. The Law Reform Commission now has a home. Attorney General Dale Marshall made the announcement at the reopening and renaming of the old Supreme Court complex. He says the commission is among a suite of legal entities to be housed at the new complex. This complex will now house the Community Legal Services Commission, which will move from its current location at White Park Road. It will be the first home, Sir David, of your Law Reform Commission, a home that is much deserved. It will be the home of the Coroner's Court, the Traffic Court, and two District A Criminal Courts. When completed in March, the Old Town Hall will accommodate facilities for alternate dispute resolution, the Employment Rights Tribunal, as well as other facilities. Okay, sports time. We head on over to the sports studio and say good evening to Anne-Marie Burke. Good evening to you, Shane. We go right into the fast lane. The newest edition of the motoring calendar, Ultra Fest, is set for the Bushy Park race circuit tomorrow. With competitors expected from Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, the Turks and Caicos Islands, the UK, and of course, our local boys. It's the culmination of the 2022 motorsport season. <laughs> Ultra Fest will serve up five hours of non-stop track action at Bushy Park with the rally sprint featuring more than 80 head-to-head -head races in four classes. Modified four-wheel drive, modified two-wheel drive, classic and Bema Cup Mattia TT. Eyes will especially be on the R5 Championship, which features the final rung of the inaugural season. At this stage, Stuart Maloney in his Skoda Fabio Rally 2 Evo is the declared champion and is intent on closing out the year on a winning note. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be the Curden, um down on the R5 Championship. Um, the, the ROC event, it's basically based on the ROC event and I think it's going to be great for both competitors and spectators. Um, the guys who head up the R5 Championship, I think they're going all out to make sure that it's going to be a rememberable event. And while Stroud is already the winner, the remaining top five positions are undecided. And Dane Skeet in his Subaru Impreza WRC S12 is in the mix. The reigning Saul Rally Barbados champion admitted he did not have much to do to get the car ready and is hoping to put in a good showing to close out a solid year. We saw him retire only once and having won all other events in which he and his team competed. As you know, we, um, we won the last event out, so we parked the car in good working order and we've just had to do a little maintenance here and there and we're ready to go and do some competition on the track. We didn't have much to do, the car was put down in good working order, so just minor maintenance and she's ready to go. The track usually favours the, the smaller R5 cars, but we will see. I have a good understanding of the track, so we can fight for it. Modified two-wheel drive includes the 2022 Barbados Rally Champion Edward Corbett 
and will also see Paul in his lighting up on the grid. Like most drivers, the transition had to be made from road to track. Preparations has been going quite well. We've decided to change the car from the usual road trim into track specs. Um, it has a lot to do with setup. Um, the car has to be well balanced. The suspension has to be set right. It's a lot of work. The best subscribe class will feature the cars from the Bima Cup, which will go head to head for the first time against competitors from the Caribbean Spec Miata series. The evening session will also see drag racing in the mix, organized by the Barbados Association of Dragsters and Drifters. The Automotive Culture Alliance has assembled more than 100 cars for the biggest car show in recent times, including the Toyota Limers, Subaru 246 and Honda Craze Barbados. There will also be a display of classic cars and a supervised kids zone. So come tomorrow, Motorsport Action for 2022 will come to a close in a big way. We go now to cricket. While the Windy Spatters had good knocks on day one, the bowlers had a tough day two of their opening tour match against the Combine New South Wales and Australian Capital Territory 11 at the Philip Oval in Canberra. The Windies declared their first innings on 424 for nine after resuming on 297 for five. Both Jason Holder and Jeremy Blackwood didn't resume their innings after being unbeaten overnight on 50 and 42 respectively. While Devon Thomas added 77 not out, with seven fours and two sixes. In their first innings, the host closed the day on 259 for two. Oliver Davies made 115, and the skipper Blake McDonald is on 76. The two wicket takers are Captain Craig Rathwaite, he has one for 15, and Ray Marifa with one for 22. The third and final day is tomorrow. To regional cricket now, Jamaica Scorpions will face defending champions Trinidad and Tobago Red Force in the final of the CG Insurance Super 50 Cup at the Vivian Richards Stadium. The Scorpions booked their place in the final after beating the Ghana Harpy Eagles by three wickets. As reported last night, Ghana made 318 for nine off their 50 overs. Scorpions reached the target on 322 for seven of 48.1. Player of the match, Rothman Powell, led the charge for now beating 105 from 92 balls. It has seven fours and three sixes. Powell got some support from Brandon King with 64 and 45 from Alwyn Williams. Kuda Keshmoti picked up three for 48. The commitment of the Insurance Corporation of Barbados Limited to the society it serves remains unchanged. That assurance came from Chief Executive Officer Goldburn Allen before the company presented $10,000 checks to six charities, the Diabetes Foundation, the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Barbados, the Barbados Red Cross, the Salvation Army, the Challenger Creative Arts and Training Center, and the Barbados Cancer Society at the company's Roebuck Street office complex. He said the services provided by the recipient organizations are important to Barbados. As a nation, we continue to operate in challenging times with access to basic needs such as food, clothing, shelter, education, and health care beyond the reach of many. But thanks to organizations like the ones we've invited here today, and many of these people, the most vulnerable amongst us, will get the support they desperately need. Barbadians will have a special opportunity to stroll down memory lane tomorrow when the Barbados Defence Force presents Barbados National Armory Tour, Rum and Rum Tasting, in association with the National Cultural Foundation. NCF Marketing Officer Ashley Dow told CBC News from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. the historic St. Anne's Fort will be transformed into a hive of activity. The Barbados Defense Force, in association with the National Culture Foundation, is offering attendees a chance to tour the Barbados National Armory and enjoy free rum tastings from five distilleries on island. Persons attending the event will have the opportunity to indulge in local culinary delights from our small business entrepreneurs. Admission to the event is free. However, interested persons should call the NCF at 417-6610 to book their spot.
Atrium will be allocated tokens to sample the rums available from Mount Gay Plantation, St. Nicholas Abbey, Four Square, and Bajan 1966 rums. Specialty attractions include the Barbados Tourism Market and Inc. Accelerator Program, which will showcase locally made food products. Also on hand will be a traditional coconut vendor with branded coconuts to celebrate the independent season, as well as a snow cone cart loaded with rum mixes and Bajan syrups. And this just in, Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley is assuring Barbadians every effort is being made to clear the backlog of criminal cases and speed up the delivery of justice in the local court system. Her remarks came just moments ago during the official reopening and renaming of the old Supreme Court complex, named in honor of legal stalwarts, former Chief Justice Sir David Simmons and prominent attorney at law Sir Henry Ford. Just last month, Prime Minister Motley announced an additional three judges have been added to the existing five to help reduce with the backlog of criminal matters. She says the new complex is another commitment to the effort to address delays in the system. It is unacceptable that 80% of the murder cases that lie before the court today to be heard in the High Court predate 2018. In other words, are longer than five years. In addition, we also accept that our ability to allow for commerce, commercial disputes to be resolved in quick time is absolutely essential if we are going to get the same level of investment that I spoke about just now to come in order to be able to fuel the growth of this country and to bring about stability for all of us. That's our news. Good night and be good. Thanks for visiting us. To get more stories like this one, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.